Ah, hello, and welcome to the very first episode of The Hat Historian. For this inaugural edition, I thought that I would talk about one of the more distinctive and recognizable hats to still, albeit very occasionally, be seen around today. The Top Hat. Worn by presidents, royalty, tycoons of industry, gentlemen thieves, gay mascots, national symbols, and even my friend back there, Scrooge McDuck, the top hat has long been a symbol of power, refinement, authority, and wealth. And while it is not worn as much today as it once was, it remains a potent indicator that the person under it is somebody important and or wealthy. The origins of the top hat are somewhat murky. According to legend, it was invented by an English haberdasher named John Hetherington in 1797, and when he wore it in public in London, it caused such a stir that he was arrested. Reportedly, he had appeared on the public highway wearing upon his head what he called a silk hat, which was shiny and luster, and calculated to frighten timid people. And the officers of the Crown stated that several women fainted at the unusual sight while children screamed and dogs yelped. It was a different time. Sadly, though amusing to modern readers, it appears that this account is apocryphal, and that if Hetherington was indeed an early wearer of the top hat, he was not the first, and certainly not its inventor. According to fashion historians, it is likelier that the hat is descended from a previous form of headwear, the capitaine, better known to Americans as the pilgrim hat, famous for having been worn by the Plymouth Pilgrims of Thanksgiving lore. These tall tapering hats were popular in Europe in the 17th century, and seemed to be a credible ancestor because of the similarities in their respective shapes, though the exact origin of the top hat is sadly unknown. The capitaine was supplanted as the dress hat of choice for most of the 18th century by the tricorn, and only in the 1790s did top hats begin to appear. So the date in the legend is at least close, if a bit tardive. Illustrations such as this one show men wearing flared top hats in 1796, and the first silk topper is credited to hatter George Dunnage in 1793. Note that none of these seem to have caused riots, showing the genteel people of the late 18th century were probably made of stronger stuff than they are sometimes credited for. In its early iterations, the top hat was often bell-shaped, with a swooping brim and a crown that became wider towards the top, in direct contrast to its truncated cone ancestors. Examples of what that might look like can still be seen on representations of characters such as John Bull or Johnny Walker, who are modeled on gentlemen of the time. It rapidly caught on with civilians after the turn of the 19th century, with everyone from gentlemen to workers wearing some form of it. The air of authority it gave also made it popular amongst the early metropolitan police, whose hats were said to be reinforced to allow the constable to stand on it and peer or climb over obstacles such as walls. Other hats were usually made of beaver felt or silk for the wealthy, wool felt for the cheaper ones. Gradually, by the 1850s, it became taller and more cylindrical, reaching heights of up to 20 centimeters, or about 8 inches, turning into the stovepipe hat seen here on engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel and his colleagues. Most famously, this type of hat was also worn by President Abraham Lincoln, who it is said liked to use the voluminous interior to store speeches, letters, or notes. With a hat becoming a staple of gentlemen's wear and de rigueur at social functions, while simultaneously becoming taller and more cumbersome, a problem emerged. At events such as theater plays or operas, a gentleman was expected to wear a top hat to the event, but could of course not keep it on during the performance, as it would block the view of people behind him, and cloakrooms quickly ran out of space to accommodate them. A solution was found in the form of, I've got one here somewhere, where, no. <clears throat> this, the collapsible top hat. The collapsible hat, also known as an opera hat because that's where it was famously worn, was invented in the 1840s by French hatter Antoine Gibus, whose name is used for that hat in French, and is often made of satin lined with a spring system, making a distinctive pop sound when released. This allowed for men to store it easily under their seats during performances, 
or for easier packing when traveling. Probably the heyday for the formal top hat was the late 19th century. By then, its shape had settled into a very gently flared shape with a slightly swooping brim, and its height had descended back to a more reasonable level, closer to 15 or 16 centimeters, about 6 inches. It was an ubiquitous element of a gentleman's wardrobe, and was essential at any event that had even the slightest degree of formality. This continued in the early part of the 20th century, until the time of World War I. By then, however, Softer, lower-crowned hats had begun to supersede it for common daytime wear. The appearance of vehicles such as automobiles made it impractical to wear such a tall hat inside them, and they began to be replaced with bowlers and early fedoras. Though it should be noted that for a long time, London taxicabs were supposed to comfortably accommodate a man wearing a top hat. Nonetheless, it continued well into the interwar period for more formal occasions where tailcoats or tuxedos were worn. It was famously worn in many movies by the legend of dance Fred Astaire, who even starred in a movie named after the item in 1935. Its slow decline could not be fully stopped, however, and by World War II, it was no longer the common sight that it had been just a generation earlier, only being encountered in state events, diplomatic functions, and the weddings of the upper class. The famous photo of the Japanese delegation to sign the instrument of surrender ending the war shows diplomats in mourning dress wearing top hats, but gradually, even these ceremonial occasions ditched the topper. U.S. presidents continued to wear one for their inauguration until President Kennedy, at which point the tradition was discontinued. Still, despite having become a rarity, this most formal of hats has not completely disappeared and can still be found in select context to this day. Today, one is likeliest to encounter the top hat in its purported country of origin, England. It is required, for example, at the Royal Ascot Horse Race, where a daytime grey hat is sometimes substituted for the black one, as well as other events involving those keepers of traditional formality, the British royal family, who are often seen in one at state occasions or at very formal weddings. I have often said that if I ever get married, I intend to wear one. A variant of it is also worn in Scandinavian schools for formal occasions by people who hold a doctorate. Less formally, it has also been worn as a fashion accessory by famous musicians like Slash or T-Pain, and is often seen on people who enjoy the steampunk aesthetic. As we covered before, it is also a handy indicator of wealth and authority in comic books or caricatures, with cartoon mayors often being seen sporting one. And of course, one of its most famous uses where it can still be seen, though it has become a bit of a stereotype now and so is not as common in real life, is by magicians who traditionally pull a rabbit out of it. This can be attributed to magicians dressing in the same style as their audience in the 1890s, when these stage shows became popular, and as we mentioned before, all gentlemen attending would be dressed in top hats. It is also convenient in that it is voluminous enough to contain the rabbit, cleverly snuck in by sleight of hand, rigid enough to not show movement, and its flat top meant that it can be placed upside down on the table without tipping over. So the top hat has had a long history, and has been a potent symbol throughout its existence. While no longer as popular as it once was, it nonetheless endures, indicating formality, power, and wealth. It is one of the most recognizable hats of our time, and will hopefully continue in its little niche for years to come. So I hope you found this interesting, and will join me again in another video for another hat. And until then, I tip my hat to you.